is Focus with Jack Connell. Good evening, I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome to this month's edition of Focus. This month we're checking in on the tourism industry here in South Dakota. Three guests with us to talk about that. Jim Hagan, the South Dakota Secretary of Tourism. He has been in that position since 2011. Michelle Thompson, the President and CEO of the Black Hills Badlands Tourism Association. And Julie Schmitz Jensen, the President and CEO of Visit Rapid City. South Dakota Department of Tourism says 12.6 million visitors came to South Dakota last year, spending $3.4 billion, leading to 270 76 million dollars in state and local tax revenue and supporting 49,500 jobs here in the state. We're going to start here with Jim Hagan. Jim, uh, the pandemic has been a challenge for all industries, tourism no exception. How has the industry here in South Dakota fared through this past year? You know, it's been amazing, Jack. And first, thank you for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the focus on tourism. We appreciate it. When we look nationally at what happened in 2020 uh, to the travel and tourism industry, so nationwide, a half a trillion dollars less in visitor spending, uh, four out of every 10 jobs in the tourism sector disappeared literally overnight when the pandemic hit. And so when we were in March and April, uh, we were pretty fearful of, of what was going to develop and what could develop in South Dakota. But as we hit May 31st, Memorial Day, we, we saw things started, things started to shift in our state. And you just hit the numbers uh, right on the head. So 12.6 million visitors in 2020. We did not expect that last March or last April or May. Uh, that was only a drop of 13%. Nationally, we are seeing drops of 50% to 80% in visitation in other cities and other states. Spending uh, $3.4 billion, that was down only 18%. The average across the United States is 45% down. Uh, some, as high, some cities, some states seeing as high as 80%. So all in all, it turned out to be a much stronger summer than we had hoped. We were really careful uh, about how we messaged uh, to those visitors to get them here. But I got to tell you, the one word we used at our tourism conference a few weeks ago was resilient. And there was so much resiliency uh, in the tourism industry, and it, it turned out to be a much, much stronger summer than we expected. Like you mentioned, the numbers were down here in South Dakota, but not as much as they were a lot of other places around the country. Why do you, what do you attribute that to? Well, I attribute it to a couple things. One, uh, I attribute it to uh, a couple. First, our marketing. We were really strategic about our marketing. When other states and cities were pulling back and not doing any marketing, and Jack, literally three quarters of states and cities didn't do any marketing in 2020. Uh, what our marketing agencies were telling us and what our research was showing was there was still a segment of the American population that wanted to travel or they wanted to be inspired and they were looking uh, to the long term. They weren't looking at 2020, but they were looking at 2021, 2022 to and beyond. And so we knew there was a segment that wanted to be inspired, that wanted to travel. Um, and so we, we went out with a message that said to them, listen, for now, be safe, stay home, great places will be waiting for you when the time is right. Um, and so I, I really, because of our technology and really knowing that we can, we can hone in on a very specific audience that wants to hear the South Dakota message and will be inspired by what we have to offer, that was key to us. The second key was, uh, honestly, Governor Nome's uh, policy of keeping the state open, um, giving us the responsibility to say, everyone, Take this seriously, but take the responsibility to keep yourself, your families, and our guests safe. And so the fact that we didn't close and our businesses didn't close was a, a huge advantage for us as well. So you add in those two major factors, uh, strategic marketing, going after an audience that really wanted to be inspired and hear about South Dakota, and the fact that we were open uh, really led to the success that we saw in 2020. I think one of the interesting things, the numbers down overall in the state, but visitation at state parks way up. Isn't it crazy? Why, yeah, why is just, that? So visitation to our state parks up 31%. Now we got to put this in perspective, like 2017, 2018, 2019, record setting years for game fishing parks and our state parks. So to be up 31% in 2020 is as absolutely astronomical. Custer State Park for the first time in history welcomed more than 2 million visitors. So what that really is showing to us, it's exactly what consumers were saying, what Americans were saying. If we travel, 
we want to get outside and explore the great outdoors. We want to be able to socially distance. Uh, we want clean air. Uh, we want to get out in, on those hiking trails into state parks, into national parks, uh, and just spread out. And so uh, given the policy that South Dakota had, given the marketing that we were doing, and given the fact that road trips and wanting to experience the great outdoors is what visitors were focused on. It was just a winning combination for South Dakota. Now, we don't have as many restrictions as a lot of states. Some people see that as a great thing. Some people do not see that as a great thing. How do you draw that balance between keeping things open and keeping people safe yeah, when they're here? Yeah, that's a great question. So one thing that we have told the visitor industry over and over, literally since last March, is safety is the new hospitality. Uh, there is going to be an expectation, there was an expectation in 2020, and there's going to be an expectation in 2021, 2022, 2023, you name it, I, for, for forever probably. Visitors are, want, wanting, are going to want to see and experience a safe environment when, when they travel. So we've been telling our industry, do everything you possibly can to keep your employees safe, your family safe, and our visitors safe. So put those health and hygiene protocols in place today. It's the new normal. It's not going anywhere. And so our, is it, our, our, our industry was very good about implementing those hygiene and health protocols. Uh, and, there, and every single month, uh, I still message out, and I end my monthly messages with, don't forget to put those health and hygiene protocols in place. Keep our visitors safe. It's the new normal. Uh, it's what they're going to expect from here on. Now, talking to you earlier, you said we may be coming on a fundamental change in tourism of what people want for a uh, while down the road. I truly believe that. I think we are in a total new normal, and visitors will expect to see those safety, health, and hygiene protocols in place from here on. Uh, it's just going to be a part of hospitality um, in, well into the future and probably forever. And so I call it the new normal. Uh, we've been experiencing it. Let's just make it part of our normal uh, routine from here on. And so um, I do think that expectation, I know that expectation is going to be there. So we, we have to keep that in mind every single day. And does South Dakota offer what people want as this changes yes, absolutely. in terms of what they want to do, what they want to see? There's no question. So a, a poll was just done with American consumers saying, what are the top six things you want to experience on, on your trip, on your next trip, on your vacation? First was they want to experience a rural destination tailor-made for South Dakota. <laughs> also in that top six, state parks, national parks, and mountain destinations. And so you look at those four of the top six, it, it is just that it's tailor made for South Dakota and for the Black Hills, uh, those four. So outstanding national parks, outstanding state parks, a mountain destination and a rural area. Uh, it, it's exactly what, uh, what visitors and travelers are looking for. All right, Jim, we are out of time with you, but thank you for coming up thank and you, uh, hopefully a good summer for Appreciate tourism it. here Appreciate in Appreciate it very much. All right, we will be back in a minute with Michelle Thompson from the uh, Black Hills Badlands Tourism Association after this break on Focus. I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, talking about tourism here in South Dakota and the Black Hills. In particular, Michelle Thompson, the president and CEO of the Black Hills Badlands Tourism Association with us. Thank you for coming up. Thank uh, you. Michelle, your annual report says tourism in this region generated $442 million in taxable sales, $1.2 billion Deadwood gaming handle, $4.2 million national park visits, so how did this area fare with the pandemic last year? You know, surpri not surprisingly, I guess, because we have such beautiful wide open spaces and beautiful scenery and things that people are looking for. We fared, like Jim was talking about with South Dakota, we fared much better than the rest of the country. Taxable sales in Western South Dakota were only down 10%, which in a normal year would not be that great of a number, but being the way that the rest of the country was, we were ecstatic that we had such a great year. There are segments of our industry that did really well, outdoor recreation, campgrounds, anybody who was offering something outdoors did really mm. well last year. And then there were some that didn't do as well, but overall we fared pretty, pretty good. Do you see that success of those outdoor kind of things continuing with, with what has happened with coronavirus? I do. You know, any of the research that you look at shows that people are, they have a pent up de desire to travel. They really want to get out and travel when they can. And something that they're looking for is outdoor recreation. They want to be out in the outdoors, experiencing the beautiful outdoors and nature and national and state parks. And so I really think that things are going to go well for us in 2021. 
Uh, we've been talking to some of our campgrounds and hearing that their reservations are up over last year. Some are saying they're up over any year that they've had previously, and some have actually said that they are almost sold out for the year. So that all sounds pretty great. How encouraging is that for you, and what kind of expectations do you have as a whole for this summer? Well, it's so hard to say. Um, you know, we're super optimistic. We're always very optimistic in the tourism industry, and we're definitely hoping for a really great year. Um, again, hopefully over last year, because last year was down a little bit. If we could be equal to what we were in 2019, 2019 was a good year for the Black Hills tourism industry. Uh, we just know that we'll continue to grow coming out of the pandemic, and being that we have a product that people are looking for, we'll, we'll do okay. Has all of this changed the way you market the Black Hills and who you might be marketing to to come here for this summer? It certainly did to begin with. Uh, when we started with the pandemic, we really didn't know what to do. Everything was uncertain. That was the big thing for our industry. Was It was just so uncertain. Businesses didn't know when or if they should open. They didn't know what they should do when they opened. We didn't know who we should be promoting to. So we did do some tweaks in 2020. We started with a locals campaign when visitors from out of the area weren't willing to travel yet. We promoted to locals to try and get people to uh, get out and help our local businesses. You know, We really want the industry to survive and then we focused regionally and then moved out a little bit further from there. So this year we're looking, again, primarily regionally, looking at states like Minnesota and Colorado and Illinois and uh, Nebraska and Iowa and such from close in areas where people are willing to come in. However, we know there's a huge desire from other areas to come in and see the area too. So digital marketing can, can hit all of them. Now, the area got some uh, big attention this past weekend with Nomad Land winning the best picture in the Golden Globes and also some good coverage there from the Badlands, Wall Drug, also Reptile Gardens. How much carryover is that? How much impact does that really have in the tourism industry for a place like this? Well, we loved seeing that. That was absolutely fantastic. And every time I see an ad for Nomadland digitally and it's got Badlands in the background, it just makes me smile. Um, being that it's such an acclaimed movie, I am certain that it's going to have an impact on us. Um, they did such fantastic coverage in the Badlands and throughout the Black Hills that I really think it will entice people to want to seek out information about this area. What goes into bringing something like that here? To bringing movie or is your are you guys involved with that is it state yeah. tourism or who, how does that all come about we were not involved at all in that process i know that it went it took place over a couple of years and that the uh, director had also filmed some other movies here as well but we were not involved in that process at all and uh what kind of expectations do you have for this summer well you know we probably have pretty high expectations we're hoping that things will be um, essentially normal. You know, we've, we, we know that group business is down, we know that international travel is down, but domestic mm -hmm. visitors are really, really looking for what we have to offer in this area. So we're very, very optimistic that this will be a good year for us. We'll continue to promote the amazing um, offerings that we have here with our family attractions. People really want to spend time with their families in this time frame. So we're very optimistic 2021 is going to be a good year for us. Is there a boost somehow that people from the United States traveling internationally for them, very complicated. They're still looking for somewhere to go. Does that help you guys as yes. far as bringing tourists here? They got to go somewhere. This is yeah. a simpler place to get to now? Absolutely. I think our entire state will see a big boost. Um, the United States travel will see a big boost because people from the United States won't be traveling internationally as much for quite a while, probably. Um, and they'll get out and see the things that we have in the United States. We have such amazing things to see and do all across the country. And it will be a great opportunity for people to travel within our own country. Uh, and it's the same thing to Jim. How do you draw that balance between having businesses open, bringing all the tourists here, and making sure that it is a safe experience as well. How important is that and how, how do you do that? Yeah, it became really important for us to be able to convey to the visitors what our businesses were doing. We can't speak for them and what they need to do, but we definitely asked all of our visitors to let us know what they were doing and to make sure that they're keeping visitors safe and their employees safe. Uh, so that was what we were trying to portray with uh, anybody who was looking at the Black Hills and Badlands region. We offered the opportunity for our businesses to create safety blogs that we would put out on our website so visitors would really know what all of these businesses are doing to keep them safe. 
All right, Michelle Thompson, we are out of time, but I appreciate you coming up, and we'll be back after this break on this month's edition of Focus, talking with Julie Schmitz Jensen from Visit Rapid City. And welcome back to this month's edition of Focus. I'm Jack Cottle, checking in with the tourism industry here in South Dakota, the Black Hills in Rapid City. Julie Schmitz Jensen joining us now. She is the CEO and president of Visit Rapid City. Thank you for coming up. Visit Rapid City been around since 1971, a nonprofit marketing organization looking at uh, right before this, uh, South Dakota, the Black Hills. How has Rapid City fared over the past year? Well, much like Jim and Michelle mentioned, we have done much better than we thought a year ago. Um, we absolutely didn't know what the pandemic was going to mean to our city and to our region and to our state, but we have been absolutely thrilled with the numbers. One of the things that I think is really apparent is that we've been socially distancing forever. That's what we offer in the Black Hills. I mean, we offer those great open spaces to get out and hike and fish and, you know, rock climb. And that's, that hasn't changed and that didn't change in 2020. And so we saw people coming here because they knew that they could get away from crowds. What signs have you seen that give you some idea of what we may have coming for this year and this summer? Well, I think that obviously we think that people are still going to be looking for the opportunity to get away into the outdoors. And we know that we'll always have that as a great offering. What we are finding also is that many, many meetings and conventions and conferences are coming to Rapid City this year. And a lot of that is because other states, other cities, have not allowed those conferences to happen and because they've limited the number of people that can gather. And we have not limited those numbers. We still are practicing very, very safe CDC requirements, but we are opening our city up to these conferences and they're saying, we're coming. And so 2021 is gonna just, I mean, it's gonna be amazing for the meetings industry. Now, when does that all begin to kick into gear? Well, it's already started. I mean, we already had some big sporting events last weekend. We're going to continue to have some of those sporting events this spring. Um, but starting towards the end of May through September, meetings are coming like every week. We have got, and some really big groups. These are not just little 50-person meetings. These are big meetings. And some of them have been in major cities for years, and they couldn't meet there. So they decided to come here, and we are welcoming them with open arms. How much are you hoping that these places like what they see here and think this is a better place than a big uh, city? That, we is, have that is our goal, Jack. I mean, huh. why wouldn't we say, okay, just don't look at us for 2021. Look at us for the, the future of your group. And what they're going to find is that it's less expensive to meet in Rapid City. It is, the people are incredibly friendly and it's easy to get here. Our airline industry has just done some tremendous things to get more flights in and out of Rapid City. I'm so proud of our airport and our airport director and the number of flights that have just shown up in the last couple of weeks. That matters to convention delegates. They need to get here and we're offering them all kinds of opportunities. How tough was that last year when that convention and meeting business pretty much just stopped all at once completely? It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking for the hotels, the motels, the Civic Center, um, because yes, that, that is such a big part of our industry, but in the end, we had all of the leisure market coming Many of, I mean, many of those rooms were filled with leisure market visitors. So yes, that was tough. It was, but it was tough nationwide. And I think that we survived much better than other cities. And uh, when you're out promoting Rapid City, what is it that you're pushing? What is it that you push as the advantages to come in here? Well, I always say that Rapid City is at the heart of all five, six national parks. Not many cities can mm. say that. And so we are a great place to headquarter and then to get out and do all of the outdoor opportunities, but then come home, come back to your hotel, to your motel, and eat at our fabulous restaurants, visit our amazing downtown. I mean, we push national parks, state parks, the great outdoors, but come to Rapid City for your mm. evening events, experience some of our great breweries and wineries. I mean, Rapid City has really got some amazing big city things in a small city. How much sometimes are you starting from scratch to get these people to know about Rapid City and know what's here? Well, or yeah, we do. We sometimes have to start at the very beginning. 
Um, but I tell you what, not as much as we used to. I think because of social media, the word is getting out way more than um, it used to. It's easier to you know, put out all of those messages about how beautiful it is here and, mm -hmm. and how easy it is to get here and the great offerings we have. So it's not like um, we're starting from scratch all the time, but sometimes it is. How competitive is that tourism business? Because you're out there pushing Rapid City, mm -hmm. but then every other city is out there pushing what they have to sell. How competitive is that? from place to place? Well, it's obviously very competitive because everybody loves those visitor dollars. And I mean, most states are spending a lot. Uh, most cities are spending a lot to get folks to come visit them. Um, but you know, if you're sincere and when they come and they find out that everything we offered and laid out is the truth and that they really did have a great experience, it, they go back and they talk to their families and to their friends. Word of mouth is a big <laughs> thing in the visitor industry. And I think we get a lot of repeat visitors because they enjoyed it so much when they were here the first time. And uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought here for a second. Uh, talking about the conventions and meetings, uh, how big of a part are they of what we're doing here? Oh, well, just start at the beginning of the year, the Black Hill Stock Show and Rodeo in January and February. That is an amazing event. So many rodeos and stock shows around the country were canceled, and but we didn't cancel ours, and that was a huge influx of people and dollars into our city and new experiences for people, younger people, because they uh, hadn't been at those, hadn't had those opportunities in other parts of the country. So I will tell you the meeting convention business is big. And if we can keep booking that business, it's guaranteed they're coming. You know, most things don't, 20, 2020 was unique in that groups did cancel. But as a rule, if you book a convention, they're coming and you know it and you can bank on it. For everything that's happened over the past year, has that changed who you market to and where you're marketing to as far as trying to draw people to this area? Well, yes, we do know the types of groups that prefer to come to Mid-America, that, that like our freedom, that like our rules, that, that like just the beauty of the area. We, we do know that there is, there is a certain group of delegates to, that come to conventions that are looking at us more seriously. As far as leisure market, absolutely. We are, we're a great place for families. We're a great place for, actually, millennials love our area because of all of the great outdoors. So we know who to market to. Trust me, between, <laughs> between the South Dakota Department of Tourism, Black Hills and Badlands Association, mm -hmm. and Visit Rapid City, we're honed in on the people that want to come here. So who are the people that want to come here then? Well, like I said, it's going to be your, your families, absolutely your adventuresome families. Um, boomers love our area because it's safe and it's inexpensive. Um, millennials are loving our great outdoors. They love our brewery scene. We're offering everything any major city offers, um, just in a smaller scale and less expensive. So I, I really believe that we are, we're honing in on the right people. And you feel like you are optimistic about what we have coming up for 2021? Absolutely. I am, you know, w again, 2020 was something nobody knew how to, you know, look ahead and know what that was going to come down to. But at the end of the day, we did really, really well. And I think that 2021, we're going to do very well also. How much of that unknown is still there, though? I mean, well, we never, never know yes. what direction this is going to go. We need to know about the vaccines and how fast they get, you know, put into arms. I think that's very important. Um, be, especially for the, the boomers that we want to come. We do know that our motor coach industry is going to take a while to rebound, um, but I do think there's a pent-up energy to travel, and we're, we're where people can feel safe because we, like I said, always social distance here. You aren't going to be jammed up on some hiking trail somewhere. You're going right. to have your freedom. All right, we are out of time. Julie Smith-Jensen, thank you very much. Jim Hagen, thank you. Michelle Thompson, thank you as well. Hopefully a successful 2021 in the tourism industry. Thank you for joining us for this month's edition of Focus. See you again the first Sunday night of next month. Good night.